Hello everybody and welcome to today's Reflection on Facebook. Uh, today's passage is taken from the Gospel of John, chapter 3. And it's a story of a visit by the Pharisee leader Nicodemus uh, to Jesus. And it can be found at chapter 3, beginning to read at verse 1. And I think I've said before on Facebook that this is the longest dialogue that Jesus has with anybody in the Gospel of John. And I think it's worth hearing right the way through. So I'm going to read it to you now. John chapter 3, beginning to read at verse 1. Now there was a Pharisee named Nicodemus, a leader of the Jews. He came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God, for no one can do these signs that you do apart from the presence of God. Jesus answered him, Very truly I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God without being born from above. Nicodemus said to him, How can anybody be born after having grown old? Can one enter a second time into the mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Very truly I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and spirit. What is born of the flesh is flesh, and what is born of the spirit is spirit. Do not be astonished that I said to you, you must be born from above. You see, the wind blows where it chooses and you hear the sound of it, but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus said to him, how can these things be? And Jesus answered him, you are a teacher of Israel, and yet you do not understand these things? Very truly, I tell you, we speak of what we know and testify to what we have seen, yet you do not receive our testimony. If I have told you about early things and you do not believe, how can you believe if I tell you about heavenly things? No one has ascended into heaven except the one who descended from heaven, the Son of Man. And just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. We're told in that passage that Nicodemus uh, was a leader. And in fact, twice it is emphasized. The fact that he's called a Pharisee immediately makes him a leader. And secondly, um, the passage tells us that he was a leader. He could have been a leader of leaders even. There may have been a small group whom he represented uh, when he came to see Jesus. He came to see him at night, which immediately makes us think that this was a clandestine visit. And perhaps being a leader of leaders, Nicodemus had a lot to lose. It was a very high risk thing to do, going and seeing this really controversial character called Jesus. And yet he couldn't help himself he recognized that there was something really special about this Jesus. And so he went to see him, to see if he could come away with some clarity about who this man was. And so Jesus spends quite a lot of time talking to him. And we've got to remember that the passage I've just read is really only a summary of what could have transpired between Nicodemus and Jesus. And Jesus uses uh, an analogy to try and explain to Nicodemus that one has to be born again in the spirit and uses this analogy of rebirth, being born again. Unfortunately, Jesus' analogy falls flat on its face because Nicodemus just doesn't get it. 
uh, we hear him saying in the passage, how can these things be? He clearly didn't understand. And I can almost feel Nicodemus getting more and more frustrated that the clarity he came to seek with Jesus was beyond grasp. In fact, he probably felt less clear about things when he left Jesus than when he arrived. I think actually that Nicodemus is an echo of many of us today. We see something really special in God, in Jesus, in the Holy Spirit, but we don't always get it. If you notice in that passage, there's a little bit of a hint that Jesus teased Nico by saying, well, you're the teacher of Israel. If you don't get it, how can anybody else stand the chance of getting it? But whatever happened in that tease, Jesus persevered with Nicodemus and continued to try and explain to him to see if Nicodemus would get it. He kept on teaching him despite his lack of understanding. And I think Jesus, God, the Holy Spirit uh, are the same with us today. God teaches us, even though he may occasionally tease us about our lack of understanding, he still perseveres with us and teaches us day by day. And he continues to teach us through the wonderful everyday to use Ikea's advert. Many of us look for teaching through brilliant, miraculous, or um, sort of fantastic happenings in our lives. But actually, I believe that God teaches us through the everyday things of life. I think that Nico must have gone home even more perplexed than when he arrived. But in the same way that Jesus persevered with him, he persevered with Jesus. And although we don't hear any more of him in this gospel until right at the very end, he obviously had spent some time thinking about what Jesus had said. Because if you fast forward to chapter 19 in John's gospel, Nicodemus pops up again at the end of Jesus' life uh, after he'd been crucified and we find him helping Joseph of Arimathea preparing to bury Jesus in the tomb. Nicodemus hung in there. And to be honest, I think that's all that Jesus asks of us. Just to hang in there, even if we don't understand everything that there is to understand. So, even when we're perplexed, let us just hang in there, even if we can't know everything. So let us pray. Lord God, we praise and thank you for your word, and we thank you for the characters that appear therein. Characters who are not perfect, but characters who are fully human, just like we are. And we pray that uh, as we move forward in our spiritual journeys, whether we're at the beginning, in the middle, or towards the end of our earthly lives, may we persevere and hang in there, just like Nicodemus did, even when we are perplexed. And we pray that we may just see a little glimpse of you day by day. Amen. Have a good day, everybody, and see you soon.